you should just do it and say it your way and put your spin on it and make it relevant to your customers. <music>
like reveal like these one of a kind like revelations or be or think like oh my god i have to have something super amazing to say and something that's totally revolutionary otherwise i shouldn't be writing about anything it can be you can write about simple things whatever your customers are thinking about and asking about write about that and just think that everything has been said and done before and you should just do it and say it your way and put your spin on it and make it relevant to your customers. Yeah, and hopefully when you do that, you get a little bit of a SEO boost. That's true. And really, which brings us to number four, and that's about just making deep connections with, with your customers through blogging and kind of revealing your inner soul and like your inner expert to them through your blog post so they kind of come to you when they need help. And um, one of the seminars we attended, the marketing seminar, one of the speakers talked about stories mm -hmm. and how human beings trade stories to connect with other people. And you can think of your blog posts as that. It's you telling the story of your business, of your brand, and kind of interweaving your customers' questions into those sto stories. Mm -hmm. And... You know, your customers want to know who you are, what you do, why do you do what you do. So tell them all of those things and and just keep your customer in mind when you're writing your blog post. You're not trying to like win an award or like be the the most like prolific writer or any of that stuff. Like you are unless you're in the business of being the most prolific writer, then you don't need to be. Yeah. And in addition to you learning or to your customers learning from you, you can also learn from them, see how they react to the blog posts. And you might shift your strategy a little bit once you see which blog posts are doing well or what people are commenting or what they're coming back and saying to you based on what you write about. It can really be a two way street. Yes. And also kind of keep keep an eye on things that people are saying when they call your business, when mm -hmm. they email your business, when they interact with your business on social media. If you do a Facebook post and a whole bunch of your customers leave questions about something pertaining to that post, maybe that is a good topic for your next blog post. So just kind of stay in tune with what people are demanding, what the masses want, I guess. Yeah, getting questions that people commonly ask either to your salespeople or on social media yes, are great places to um, get topics for uh, your blog post that you're going to write, which really ties in with our next one, number five. It's the perfect choice to go omni-channel. Right. And, um, you know, omni-channel is a big buzzword out there. It really just means using multiple channels to, you know, together to gain some synergy. So it's a situation where hopefully one plus one equals three instead of two. Yeah. And kind of, I guess, the way I look at it is like thinking, you think about where are people buying products or services like yours? And do you need to be there? If you need to be there, then you should be there. But you shouldn't be trying to to be everywhere. Yeah, don't... Yeah, some like platforms are not relevant for you. Don't stretch yourself right. too thin. Do as many platforms as you can reasonably um, and as many promotional channels as you can. And like we were just getting into a little bit before, it's the perfect opportunity blogging is to you know, share that blog post on other promotion channels, whether it's social media or anywhere else. And it's also a good tool to use as marketing or sales collateral. You know, if one of your salespeople, they do have that question that they get asked a lot, and then you went ahead and wrote that blog post about it, they can just go ahead and email the link to that blog post in addition to whatever else they want to say with, hey, here's some more information about that. We get that question a lot, actually, and here's the answer to it, and here's why maybe our product is the the right solution to that or why that objection isn't necessarily something to be concerned about because we outlined here why, you know, why it's not. And really that could be the thing that tips the the sale in your favor. Mm -hmm. If someone is on the fence or someone is deciding whether to do business with you versus someone else in your industry, if you send them information that's relevant and it seems like you really care about your customers and you took the time to actually answer the question in form of a blog post, that could con convey to that customer that you are the more caring business mm -hmm. and that he or she should go with you. But also be honest. Um, right. It sometimes means, you know, 
maybe not losing a customer, but maybe losing a customer in the short term, like disclose pricing, like you right. explain how much the website costs. And maybe some people aren't going to buy the website from you then. They're going to go somewhere else. But that's probably good for both you and them. If your price wasn't a good match for them, then you know, giving them the honest answer, telling them where they can get it cheaper or more expensive if they need a higher quality or you know something you don't offer, mm -hmm. then maybe later on they do realize that your product is a good match. You've educated them and they trust you because you are willing to maybe give up the business in a sense to to point them in the right direction. Yeah, you're essentially putting the customer first. Yeah, and you are saying. I care about you and your wants and your needs, and I want you to get the best service or product that matches your needs. And if I am not that person, I'm okay with it. Here's where you can get, you know, a better match for what you're looking for. And I think people most of the time are going to appreciate the honesty that you put out there instead of just saying like, yeah, I can do this for you and just kind of taking people's money and not really being able to deliver on what they need. Yeah. And especially the pricing, people are going to figure it out. Yeah. The first thing I do when a website doesn't have pricing is I Google the name of that right. product plus pricing at Google. And then either a competitor discloses pricing on that particular thing, or you end up on a review site that discloses the pricing of you and all of your competitors. And then that just gives the person an opportunity to get more educated about your competitors and have more of a reason to maybe go with one of them instead. Yeah. So just be honest and, you know, I always say that honesty is the best policy yeah. and you can't win every customer. You shouldn't even be trying to. And, and that's OK, yep. which which takes us to the next point of the fact that blogging allows you as a business to really control your promotional efforts. You get to craft the story, you frame the story, you write the story, you present the story. So it gives you a lot of control over how you want to promote your business and your products and services. So instead of being, I guess, beholden to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, you you control that. It's it's on your website. So for example, if if you were relying on Facebook on Facebook for all of your promotional stuff and one day Facebook decides that they don't want to be Facebook anymore and they delete all your stuff, they've deleted it. It's gone. Yeah. They're not gonna call you up and say like, hey Bob, like we're thinking about deleting everything. But I'd like, do you want to save any of this stuff? They're just going to wipe it out. Um, but when your blog content is on your website, you own it. And you also have the luxury of repurposing it. You can take a blog post and make a video about it. You can make, you know, you can create an Instagram story for me. You can do an Instagram post. You can do a lot with it. And the other powerful thing is that you can collect people's email addresses, people who come to your blog, mm -hmm. and you can send them notifications where a, when a new blog post comes out, which is very powerful. So it, it's a good way to keep people coming for more. Yeah. And one of the other things you can do is, I'm sure you've gotten these on your phone where you get the little push notification that something has happened in an app or on a website. And you can do the same thing with your blog pretty easily. You install this little plugin or whatever. And then when you get a new, it asks people to opt in on your website. Do you want to get notified when this website you mm -hmm. know, has a new post? And then it sends it to all the people who have agreed. So it's just like email, but it's just another way to um, you know, encourage more people to come back to your blog. Yeah, and you you it allows you to stay in contact and kind of keep your brand at the front of their mind. Yeah. So, you know, controlling the content forever and just making it your own hub. We talk tell a lot of clients about this and mm -hmm. other people we talk to. When you control your website and your content and your email list and you have that central core that you control, then you can go use any platform that pops up anytime, whether it's Facebook, Snapchat, whatever it is, like you have this core of marketing material that you control and then you use these other platforms and tools, but you're not reliant on them for your business. Exactly. And essentially you have more control of your destiny. Yeah. And, and that's a good place to be. Right. That's where we're all trying to be. 
And I guess we should now talk about the ROI and like what can what can people expect? Like how long does it take and all that good stuff that everyone wants to know? Yeah. Number seven, it takes time and effort to achieve a positive ROI. Yes. Um, you know, blogging is very easy in the sense that it's easy to do. Anyone can write a post um, right. and put it out there. You can get a free website. You can post stuff on there. We don't recommend that. Um, we recommend that you, you know, have a, a website that looks nice and has all of that stuff that we've talked about previously. And then, you know, you write good content, you put in the effort to write something that people are actually going to want to read. And that's the difficult part in a sense, producing quality content that people want to read, doing the research to get that unique idea or crafting your own spin on, you know, an idea that's already been out there, whether it's talking about it in terms of your industry or whatever your life story or business story adds to that idea. That takes time, whether it's you doing it or whether you have an employee doing it or whether you have to hire a freelance writer. And either with employees or freelance writers, you're going to have to pay more money for the higher quality. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's going to be an investment on your on your part to make that happen. And so that means you have to dedicate time and money to it. And in terms of how long it can take, it can take months or even years, especially if you're a new business and your goal is SEO or branding. It's going to take time for the results to accumulate, for people to recognize you as an authority, for Google to recognize you as an authority and to move you up higher organically. So um, it's a little bit easier if you have an established business, you have a customer list that you can start sending these blog posts to, then you can take more of an immediate advantage of the posts you write. Mm -hmm. But for a new business, it's going to take time and you're going to have to willing to go you know, the long haul if you want it to work for SEO and for branding purposes. And it also depends how competitive yes. your industry or your space is. If you have 10 other people who are operating in your industry and they are like blogging beasts mm -hmm. and they're just putting out content and doing all this stuff, it's going to take you a little bit longer to actually surpass them. And But if you are in an industry where there are no blogging beasts and everyone is kind of you know laying low then you can like get ahead fairly faster yeah if you're in law or marketing even, oh yeah well that's it's... just like competitive industry times 20 yeah it's expensive there's right. people who are spending you know tens hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on on you know that industry so it really does depend a lot. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you s should not blog. No. Like someone can still end up on your website and your blog post can't convince them that you are the right like right law firm to hire. Yeah. Just because your blog post is not going to show up in like the, the Google snippet type of thing mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you shouldn't be writing a blog post. Yeah, you just need to be more realistic. Yes. Depending on what industry you're in, you might have to do a little bit of research or right. talk to someone about, you know, how much work does have to be done in this industry to, to rank higher um, or just focus on the other stuff that you can get out of it. Share it on your social media. Mm -hmm. Use your blog post to convince existing customers to mm -hmm. buy additional products. Oh, yeah, that's or, the other thing. Convincing existing people that, you know, hey, I'm still here. Come yeah. back and buy from me. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want people to forget about you. That's true. Um, is there anything else that we should have told people about blogging? No, I, nothing. It, it, it can be a struggle. It's sometimes a struggle for myself because I'm often in my head and mm -hmm. I'm rereading what I wrote and I think that I need to be like Mark Twain of freaking writing blog posts. And then I have to snap back and remind myself like, no, just like write the way you're, the way you're thinking and just put it out there and yeah. Stop perfecting it. Get it out there. There's going to be mistakes. There's yeah. always mistakes. Just Published books have mistakes in them. You can't avoid mistakes. Exactly. I mean, and but I'm not saying don't like don't check your grammar. Well, yeah, you course. should. Yeah. And make sure that it has like a good flow and all of that stuff. But it doesn't have to be like an award-winning novel or any of that stuff. Yeah. Better to be good and on time than that's perfect right. and late. So I think that's all I have. All right. That's it. If anyone else has still has a question or a comment about blogging in terms of your business, feel free to leave us a comment below the video if you're watching the video. If you're listening, um, you can uh, contact us on social media or go to our website, find our email address, our telephone number. We'd be happy to ask any answer, rather, any marketing questions you have. 
Uh, thanks for listening or watching, and we'll have something just as great for you next time.